So say hello to us if you are joining us. Um, and if you're joining us for the first time, let us know in the comments below. Um, we have a really special episode today. I know I say that often, but we really do. Um, we have two of our favorite people here. And so we're excited to ask them questions and they are just going to bring it. They're going to bring the authenticity and all of the fun things that we know you guys want to talk about that we haven't been talking about. So get ready with your questions, stick them in there and welcome to episode six of the leader equation. So today we have Dan Mouse and then we also have his director of operations, Ellen Marie Foga, which we're really, really excited about. Ellen Marie is also with Ops Boss Coaching. So there's another fun thing. All right, so I'm Lindsay Soprani, CEO of Soprani Consulting. We're the top recruiting and consulting firm in the country for all things real estate. And I'm here with Christy Belt Grossman, who is my co-host, and she is the CEO of Ops Boss Coaching, the ultimate resource for training and coaching real estate ops bosses. Welcome to the leader equation. So again, you know, I already said today we've got these two and they've been together for four years in March. And so guys, can you just tell us really quickly and we'll make you go first, Dan. Um, tell us who you are, just give us a little bit of a backstory. How did you get into real estate? And then Ellen Marie will have you go right after that. And then we'll kick it over to Christy to do the quick fire questions. Awesome. Um, so I started in real estate back in 2005. I got licensed as a junior in college because real estate was really hot and my brother was starting to get into investing and we thought, eh, why not? Let's, uh, let's go get our license, get access to the MLS and things like that. Had no intention on becoming a real estate agent full time. Uh, when I graduated from college in May of 06, I went full time and two years later I was at Keller Williams and the rest is kind of history from there. I love it. Wow. Ellen Marie. I know that. Oh, I, um, I got my license in 2011 as a part-time realtor with a couple of friends thinking we'll do this for fun on the weekends. It seems like a good idea. And I ended up loving it a lot more than I thought and jumped in full-time about a year and a half later um, as a single agent. And then I joined Dan in 2017 as a transaction coordinator and then now his director of ops. Awesome. Oh, wow. See, I never knew that about getting your license in college. That's really cool. My brother did that. My my previous rainmaker as well. So, okay, we're going to do quick fire real quick. Um, number of years in business, each of you, I think you just told us. So 2011 and 2005. Yep. Four years together. Year okay. one, did you have a profit or a loss? Any idea, Dan? <laughs> no, honestly, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> That's why she's in her place right now. <laughs> yeah, Great, the, the honest truth. And then either last year's profit or projected profit for this year. So last year we were at 46%, which was about like between eight and 9% increase from the year prior. Um, and this year I would like to be still profitable, but a little bit less because we have bigger goals of Dan stepping out of production in the year or two to come. Um, so I'm hoping to be around 35 this year. Awesome. And you guys did about just under 300 units last year. Yeah, 294. Yep. Exactly. Okay. How many people are on your team? So we have eight agents, four on the op side and one ISA. Okay. And book that impacted you the most, Dan? I would say the 12 week year, chunking it down. All right. Popular at the moment. Ellen Marie? Um, I really had to think about it, but I kept going back to fierce conversations. It was a book that you recommended, Christy, that I read, I think when I first started coaching. It's something I go back to almost daily with my notes, with thoughts. I really think about it a lot and try to implement from there. Oh, okay. good. I want to dive into that when we get into the combo. All right. How many streams of income do each of you have? Well, that depends on how you count it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, have, I have rental properties um, and, and I have like nine units there. So I'm like, do I count them individually or I count it all together? Uh, so I have, uh, what's that? I have five streams of income if I'm counting it as one. Okay, perfect. And Ella Marie? Um, I have two. Okay, perfect. Superpower. Yours or the other person, <laughs> whatever you want. I know they both look at each other. I know. Yeah. That's awesome. she, can, she can read my mind quite often um, uh -huh. before I say anything. She knows exactly what I'm going to say. All the time, not often. Um, and Dan's superpower would be seeing all sides 
of every story all the time and keeping it positive, even though. Sounds exciting. Yeah, it's the worst thing ever, but it's it's good in the end. But when you're hearing it, it's it not drives you crazy, but there. good for the team. Yeah. Okay. I love that. We'll dive into into that dynamic too. So. For those of you who are joining us for the first time at The Leader Equation, we're chatting with owners, founders, CEOs, entrepreneurs, and their shotgun leaders inside and outside real estate. And I think we have some outside real estate guests coming up next month, which will be really fun, about what adds to the leadership formula, what subtracts, what divides, and most importantly, how you can multiply your results. So let's dive in, Lindsay, to the real meat of the conversation. Yes. Well, we kind of heard that, you know, how you guys got into real estate. And so, you know, but how did you come together? Like, what did that story look like? How did you know you wanted to be in business together? Spill it. I feel like we have different stories. She okay. didn't want to be in business <laughs> at all. I tried to recruit her first to the office, right? Uh, we did. We were co-ops on, on a couple of things. And then um, my former team that I was with, I tried to get her to come on board there as a, as a sales agent. And then I don't even know what made me call her back then, but then I remember calling about the TC position and it was just the right timing. Well, that's interesting. So she was an, I didn't know that either. She was a co-op agent on the other side, but you called her to recruit her initially as an agent and then as a TC. That's fascinating. Well, and what made you want to do the TC job? Cause you were an agent. What's happening there? So Dan, well, the real story is he stalked me. <laughs> and then bribed me with a paycheck. So I was, I had my son and he was what, like 18 months old. Mm -hmm. And I was out showing rentals or something with him on my hip. And Dan just kept calling and calling and he would call at the right time somehow because he can he could read my mind then too. Um, and it was like, just, I remember it was a cold rainy day. Henry was on my hip and I'm like, all right, fine. I'll come in, I'll talk to you. I'll figure out what this, paperwork job means dropping off an escrow check yeah <laughs> what the paperwork job means I love it yeah. well and so but you were not somebody who was looking to potentially be the paperwork person so you know I mean Dan were you worried about that because that's going what back, I think going back to that time I mean so I had just split a year prior on my other partnership that I was with for like eight years mm -hmm. I was hiring I had hired an NEA, um, and then I realized that that got me through that year, but to take the business to the next level, I needed something else. So I needed a, a more solid transaction coordinator. Um, I don't know what it was that led to that talk, but I just said, hey, I, I have an opportunity I want to talk to you about and see if it worked. I mean, it was so uncomfortable for me. The way I submitted my offers on his listings, they were very well put together, organized, Tell the truth. I think my <laughs> landlords had quite the opportunity with your tenants. They ended up being a couple <laughs> bad rentals, but I'm not the one who accepted that. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. That's such a perfect example. I think for pe people are always asking Lindsay and I, like, where do I find my ops boss? Like, you might have people literally right in front of your nose that you've never thought of in that way. Yeah. And look where it led. So you did TC work for a year and then Dan, like, what did you see in her that you thought, well, maybe she should do something more on the team? So I think just the way that she handled those files for that year and to see how she really gained a leadership position with the agents was really a key sign there. Um, plus the fact that she was having Penelope in May of uh, 2018, right? So I needed a replacement for her in that role for the time being, mm -hmm. which we didn't have in place at that point. But the, the plan was when she came back that I wanted to have her in a, in a bigger role because I knew that I was neglecting that part of the business and we weren't going to get to where we wanted to get to. And so I got myself out of doing that. Mm -hmm. Well, oh. and see, I love that because it's so funny with the well, before we started, we, we started the conversation before we actually went live here talking about how your personalities are a little bit different, right? I mean, let's, let's talk about that during this part, because I think it's very important to know, like, 
Dan, I love that you were like nervous and that what you didn't want to like talk to her about all those things. And why is that? Like, what is your personality on the DISC assessment? Um, I'm a great, great match for an assistant. I'm a high <laughs> S, high C. Right. How, how high would that be, Dan? Uh, 99 each. <laughs> I love that. Loves the spreadsheets, loves the yes. all the things. They, they hate my spreadsheets, but I love them. <laughs> and then, like them. Yeah. And then Ellen Marie, what are you? So now I, I was an IS and as of last week I'm an ID. I don't think I have anything to do with that. Dan though. has changed. <laughs> he, he's changed me completely. <laughs> you guys are the exact flip of what we normally hear behavioral profile, which is why behavioral profile is only a small part of the process. It took right? me a while yeah. to learn that too. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, and that was something we were talking about a little bit beforehand. You know, I asked um, you whether or not that was really hard for you, because I remember when I heard that I wasn't like the perfect assistant, I was like, what do you mean? I'm, not, I'm so good at this, um, which I was good to a cer certain degree, but it was not where my strength zone was. Right. And so, you know, did you ever struggle with that at all? Of course. Yeah. I mean, it was, it's not easy to let go. I still don't fully let go of things, um, but I've come to trust a lot more over time. So I'm glad I I got out of my own way and mm -hmm. need to continue to do that. So what does that look like? I think uh, of all the different relationships that I've observed and I observe a lot through coaching, you guys have this synergy and you're really, you come at things differently, but the way you guys meet every week, the way you like work through your problems, talk to me about how did that develop over the past three years? Or like, was it instantaneous or at, like at what point did you guys both come into your own strength and be able to work together? So it definitely took time um, and trust although we work in a very similar fashion and mm -hmm. I think always have. So it was easy in the beginning, I wanna say to learn to read your mind, but we always worked well together, which is nice. But through getting to know each other, through communication, learning our different communication styles, we are, were able to work through problems faster that way. Yeah. Um, but meeting every week, I think alone has improved our communication and therefore improved our growth. Well, the meetings have purpose now too. Yeah. They didn't before, honestly, until yeah. I got her into, to be frank, when I got her into coaching with you and I, yeah. and I looked at that as that's an investment to make sure that she thrives in the role. Um, that was probably the turning point, I think, in getting things, I guess, getting clarity around things. Um, direction I, yeah. I beat around the bush a lot I'm always a hey, look you know yeah no that's fine and she's like no like no we can't do it that way we're not going to succeed if we do it that way and things like that so it, it sets me straight honestly um with the way that our relationship has developed in this so at what point in time so it was what a year and a half into your role that you finally just started taking the bull by the horns Ellen Marie I think so yeah so what year? advice, what advice did, like, Dan, do you like that she does that? Do you wish she was quieter? Like what, give us the rainmaker point of view on that. With my personality, I wish that some things would just be, oh yeah, fine, whatever. But I know that it's, I know that it's the right thing at times. Um, I, I would say that when we first started and she was a transaction coordinator, she handled the file pretty much how I would have handled it, handled the conversations, how I would have handled it. So there was a trust there that built up right away okay. to where I do let go of some of these things. I mean, I'm very hard on myself to keep my, like, it's not easy for me to keep standards in the team and things like that, because I just, uh, yes, I want everybody to be happy and be okay and have no conflict. Right. <laughs> we also learned over time that in growing, you know, our vision our values that they really aligned and that we build off of that continually. 
So when that aligned for both of us and coming up with them together, I think for the team was a huge help. Um, and we lead that way, or at least I, I like to think. That so what does that look like on your team? Like what, when you say our vision aligned, our values aligned, sh share a little bit of that. Yeah. So we're always talking about growth and opportunity and over the past year or so, I think we became very clear on where Dan sees the team this year, next year, five years, even 10 years we're looking at. Um, and when, when we figured that out, you know, we always had team values. We always had our own values, but it wasn't set in stone, I would say, up until about a year ago. And we really focused on what is so important to us in growing this team and being in business personally every day. And we came up with those over time, but it was like a Saturday morning through text message. Yeah. Um, and once those were set, I think a lot became clear to me um, in just day-to-day -day business. Why do you think that was important? Well, I would say that if we go back to the conversation we had before going live here, mm -hmm. um, I was growing the team at a certain point just because I thought I had to grow it and it's what I should have done. Hey, let's go find agents and just go do it. And then what I realized was, wow, this is really impacting our core mm -hmm. culturally. Mm -hmm. And it could have got really ugly and really bad. Um, so we corrected our path and realized that what our values really were. And I think that's really what set us on that path to figure that out. And that's why it was so important because we want to be in business with certain people. Mm -hmm. Did you guys get in business with some people that maybe weren't such a good fit and then get out of business with them and kind of realign? Yeah, that was hard on me too. I'll be, I'll be honest. Like, I don't like to let go of someone. Yeah. Um, you know, I, uh, it's always harder for me to make that decision, but one of my focuses in coaching has always been being a more decisive person. Mm. And I realized that I needed that. Well, and is that something that you guys like, you know, communication wise, like, did you not line up on that often? Because I would imagine Ellen Marie, you were like, they've got to go, we've got to change this. Right. It's hard because culture is so important to me and I know what it is to Dan as well, but you also see production and you kind of have to figure out like what is more important to us here in growing um, and our culture and our values just really came through during that time and became more important in the long run. Um, and everyone, you know, it's all good people. It's just sometimes right. culturally, it's not. Yeah, great people. I mean, all. productive people too. You know, it wasn't even yeah. just that they weren't productive. It was just, it wasn't the right match. Mm. Um, you know what? There's a question that just came in that I feel like is a really good one to do right now, but it says, what is the biggest lesson you learned to get out of your own way and let the team grow and evolve? A good question. It's a really good question. <laughs> like a good question. Because I do feel like we're in our own way a lot, right? Like, I mean, you were in your own way, not knowing what was really important and why you were growing it, right? Like, what's the point, right? And if you don't know where you're going, it's really hard to go anywhere. Yeah. yeah. You're yeah, never going to get there. Yeah, no. And I've, I've been hearing about vision for over 10 years from my coach. Um, been with him over 10 years. And at first I'm like, oh, how am I going to afford this coaching when I first got into it back in 2009, 2010? And now I'm like, wow, what if I never took that chance on myself? Um, but it always has taken me kind of a, I'm on a lag time with implementing, right? So I think that's the biggest thing for me is that, yeah, I can read a book, I can listen to this, but if I'm not implementing anything, then what's the point? So I finally started to implement, which led to hiring Ellen Marie as an operations manager and letting go of that. And then seeing that path on the vision of what do I really want this to look like and how much opportunity can we really create? And that drives me because I always want to provide that opportunity. I don't want, if so, I don't want anybody getting stagnant. I, I want them to be able to hit their goals and help them do it and hold them accountable to it. Mm. 
what does that look like now on your team? So help, helping people hit their goals, like is it four one ones weekly meetings? Like what, what are you guys doing to help these people achieve those goals? So we're all about the four one one. Um, so Dan and I separately, we meet every Monday morning to go over our four one ones. Um, we try to keep it on the quicker side of meetings, but what did you do last week? Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> I come with my post-it note prepared and that sometimes, yeah. um, but that's how I know that our goals and our vision is aligned all the time on a weekly basis, even, and then long-term. So once we meet weekly and we're pretty good with each other, keeping each other accountable mm -hmm. to that. Um, and then I do the same thing with the team. So Dan right now meets with the agents for um, their accountability meetings. And then I meet with the operations side. And I know the ops girls, we're all doing our 411s. Um, and that's what we talk about weekly. I love one of the things that I think you guys do that is unusual, and I would love more people to do it is that you do your 411s with each other. Yeah. So it's not just Dan doing his with you, it's you doing his with him. So you're yeah. holding each other accountable not only holding each other accountable, but you know what's important to him personally as well as professionally. I think it's given you guys an alignment. Um, I love, Ella Marie's like the queen of 411s. Like she's like got so much clarity. She literally will have a goal on her 411 that says 48 411 meetings with Dan and mm -hmm. she'll hit it each year, which I think has propelled your ability to be implementers and multipliers instead of just one plus one equals two, you guys are actually multiplying the growth of the business that way. Mm. I love that. And they, our, our, our 401s are like so personal sometimes and it yeah. can sometimes be awkward. I feel like when he's asking me about those personal goals, but that's why I love it so much because he's holding me accountable to business things as well as personal. Mm. Nice. Which is awesome. And yeah. should we, I'll embarrass you. Last year, Ellen Marie had a really big personal goal. What was that that you achieved? So uh, on my 411, I did, I started the year with um, how many pounds I wanted to lose. And then weekly I went pound by pound <laughs> and I ended up losing over 60 pounds. Congrats. But it was, Christy was holding me accountable. Dan was asking me. Yeah, like, I just wanted you to share that because I think it's awesome that both of you guys can share on all the levels like that. That's, and if you do that throughout your organization, it makes such a difference. Yeah. We know what's important to each other, how to motivate each other. Yeah. Love it. And you know, I think um, Rebecca would right. like to know who your favorite admin is. Yes. <laughs> Rebecca asked, I would say Taylor. <laughs> I was gonna wonder. I, was, I couldn't tell if you guys saw that comment come through or not. It was awesome. Um, you know, something that's really cool about that. You know, I went through a weight loss journey as well, which I'm sure you guys know. And I, I, you know, I didn't have my operations person holding me accountable to that. I do now. I have one of them holding me accountable to working out, which I've been really bad about, and I just started again today. But, I, you know, I think it's so cool because. In my head, I'm like, oh, would I want my male boss knowing that that's like, right? And I think so many people get in that funky place of like, oh, I don't want them to know. I don't want them to know what I weigh right now. But like, none of that matter. I, mean, I don't think he knows total numbers. I didn't know the numbers, but I would say that. Just the tracking. <laughs> it was it was something that I started to do because I was tired of just being that dad that just went home and sat on the couch and didn't feel like playing with the kids and this and that because I was tired. And I'm like, I need more energy, whatever. And yeah. Well, they are, I'm going to like walk for, you know, 10 minutes a day or something like that on the treadmill, which then turned into someone challenging me to run a half marathon. So I had to start training for that, of course. <laughs> and, uh, and then it turned into just developing kind of like a, you know, a passion for just getting out and running. And, you know, like we were just talking about the Peloton and even though I haven't yeah. been on it in two months, I'm going to say that here because now I got to get on it because I just put it out in public. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, is it your whole team running a 5k or something? Um, so we have all of the admins. Our goal is to run a 5k. It's in September, October of next year. Um, we're walking together right now. It's baby steps, but we all have the couch to 5k app downloaded. That was like one task on one week. So we'll get there though. And I have to share this because this is where I think we have really great people on this team. So I said that I was getting up at six, but I was going back to bed lately because I was so tired. 
and I was not expecting this, but this morning I get a text message from Ben and two of us, three of us have a text message where we're, we all wanted to get up at six and stay up. And he texts me a picture of my street sign. And I'm like, <laughs> now I feel bad because I couldn't get out because my two-year-old woke up and my wife was up at five with her. So then she brought her down with me at six. So I'm up with her and he's outside ready to run five miles in this weather. But like, that's just the culture that we're building. And it's, yeah. uh, I thought it was really cool. Cause I mean, it was just, I was not expecting it one bit. And so he showed up. How different is that now though? Like that has got to make you want to show up every day because it's fun, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's so hard to be in a culture where that's not yeah. happening. Yeah. It's definitely fun. And uh, mostly everyone is virtual right now. The op side, we were telling you, we're all in the office every day. It's fun. We're, we're holding each other accountable to these personal fun goals, to personal serious goals and to business goals. Um, I really, I, I love it. I love that. That's very cool. And I mean, so just to take a step back to, you know, I'd love to know, and I'm sure some of this is kind of a part of this, but like when you guys first started leading together, like how different are you now? And like, is this all a big part of that change is like coming together and having this culture and be a big part of it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I know that I'm definitely a lot different in regard to like decision-making, for example, because that was a focus of mine. Um, I mean, I've made some pretty big changes that would normally have taken me a lot longer to make. And I just am now just on impulse, like, you know what, this is the right move. Mm. Yeah, we're focused. I would say we're clear on where we're going. Um, I love that we align with our goals. Mm. What's, what mistakes have you made along the way? Like, what were some of the road bumps? Were there any? No. <laughs> We're perfect. Come We're perfect. On. Sorry. <laughs> How long do we have on this? Um, <laughs> every mistake possible has yeah. been made. I'm trying to think yeah. of like an example. Um, I think every my day. biggest mistake is not setting it up like a business up front. Mm. You know, if I could start over again and knowing what I know now, it's like, break it out. Break it out to what I want it to look like in the future. And trust me, I was coached on that. I just never did it. So <laughs> aware of that. Um, but now it's really honing in on that. And it, and it's taken a couple coaches that I've gone through that I realized, man, all that work that we put in is paying off now, you know, or, Hey, I got clarity on this. And, you know, this is great to be able to do that. I mean, I had a couple of great coaches that have coached me, but I, I felt that, you know what, it's time for a change, you know, it's time for something new, you know? So at each point I'm, I'm learning something that I have implemented, but I don't realize that I'm implementing it because it's more of a longer term Mm. Yeah. I want to ask you guys, knowing kind of as you guys have navigated the last year, I think businesses kind of have those roller coasters, like it's not a straight line up, right? And I think, Dan, you kind of were a little bit challenged. You talked about early in your career, like feeling like you should grow a team and not doing it, being clear on why you were doing it, and then kind of figuring that out and straightening the ship. And I think you kind of went through that again last year. And it was interesting to watch the two of you navigate that together and then make that transition in coaching and go to the next level. Can you share a little bit about that journey? So I, I felt like everything that I was putting into place wasn't really honing in on why I was doing it, right? So I, I kept thinking that like, yeah, I'm putting this there because that's what the seven levels say, you know, and then it's what I want, but I wasn't digging into really why I wanted it, what that purpose was behind it, who I was really, and, you know, what I wanted to provide opportunity with and um, just, just building out that future for my family, for my business, for the team members here, providing that those extra layers of things that they can achieve. So I ended up switching coaching and, and really going with a, a full balance coaching as you know, as you're aware of. Um, so it was great. I mean, I, I had to go more into a transformational type because I was, I was having these coaching calls and I was just stuck and they were honestly, the coach, it, the coach was not the problem. The coach was great. It was me not doing it because I wasn't really honing in on 
what exactly was driving me to want to do this. And had, did that hold the business back? The fact that you were struggling with that personally, did that absolutely put the a ceiling to, on the business? So without a doubt, I, I think it was, you know, my career has always been like kind of gradual, then sudden, right? And, and now it's become more impactful over time to where there's more growth, but it's because we're purposeful about it now. Whereas before it was just kind of organically. Yeah. Ella Marie, how did that, how did, did, were you aware of that going on? Like, how did that impact you as someone who is the DI, ID, whatever on the team? Yeah. So, I mean, it, it was frustrating at times because it's like, no, don't look at me. It was, <laughs> yes, like, let's, we're all of a sudden like on this increase, like, okay, let's put things in place. Let's hire these people. Let's get moving. So I'm like, okay, I want to be at the end like that. Let's get there. And I want to move really fast at this point and keep the success going. But it was like, well, hold on. Like, I don't know why we're doing this or this is just the next step. And I'll be like, well, I did all this. Why can't we keep going? Why can't I go to the next step? Like, why isn't, so it was a lot of whys for me and it was definitely frustrating. Um, I see a huge change in Dan and more clarity in his own why and things like that. Um, and I think since you've been in transformational coaching, it's been a change in our communication and thought process. Um, and we're kind of like back on the train mm -hmm. in a more purposeful way of moving. Mm -hmm. um, knowing that why behind things, I know like, everyone talks about it. what's your why, what's your why, but it's such a big factor in everything um that it's a huge thing that i know what his why is and vice versa and behind everything um so figuring that out and really honing on that has changed the way i do business on the team for sure i appreciate you guys sharing that i really wanted you dan especially to talk about that because Lindsay, i know you see this too we see this a lot on teams where agents have been in the business in that like tenure to 15 year range and you build for because you should and your heart isn't necessarily in alignment with your head and I loved watching the two of you navigate that together and Ellen Marie not giving up trust but supporting Dan in that and then Dan doing the really hard work to move to the next level and I would just I just wanted you guys to each share that so people listening can know that you guys can navigate through to the other side of that. Yeah. And something you just mentioned about trust, like that's what it is. I see Dan has trusted me through so much. So it's, you know, we have so much trust for each other, I feel, and you know, you're going to get there. You have to take the right steps and know what's needed. And sometimes, you know, each other's coach needs to tell you what's needed. <laughs> Well, and can we ask you guys, like, what, what clarity did you really come to? So like, can you share a little bit about like, what are the big whys? Like, what is really driving you guys now? Because it sounds like you have gained clarity there. Uh, I would say the big goal this year is to position the business for me to step out and lead coach, um, you know, and, and just really grow there. Um, that's what got me to where I am today. Honestly, it was just, I mean, through that coaching and through the accountability, I've just become obsessed with the numbers of things and, hey, you have a goal to go on this many appointments and, and, and I'm still there. It's just that I want to help other people get there and I want to, I want to get the team to a level where they're hitting their goals and they're, they're building that life by design for them, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and especially for the admin staff, I mean, they're equally as important, Um you know, I want them. And that's why I love that she's doing the 411 reviews and all that, because it's, that's where I was lacking at. Hmm. You know, it was all about the transactions, all about that new listing coming in. It wasn't ever about those goals, you know? Yeah. What about you, Ellen Marie? The same thing? I really think so. I want to say something different, but I agree. <laughs> okay. I mean, the succeeding through others is so important. And it's something that I've learned over the past year that I really get joy out of. Um, and I, you know, we both feel that way. Talk a little bit about that because both of you, I think 
in your earlier years together were much more transactional than you were relational. And I've seen an evolution there. How did you make that change? Like you don't just wake up one day and go, okay, now I'm going to be this. Like, what did that look like? What did it look like? I don't know. <laughs> it's all a blur. I think, so, it's really a blur at this point. No, I mean, <laughs> once, so I, I, once I was put into coaching with you and we really started to focus on the 411 and coaching the whole person, I think that's kind of when it was introduced yeah. to us. And it was like, Agree. wow, like this <clears throat> really relates all of my personal goals and all of my business goals. And I, in the beginning, I think doing our 411 meetings was only because someone told me to and okay Dan like you're supposed to ask me about am I going to church on Sunday or like how many pounds did I lose and it was kind of weird in the beginning but then we're like okay we do care and this is important to her so it's gonna be important to me and um that I think improved our relationship and just you know steamrolled into the team and if they're along for the ride you know <laughs> this is what they're gonna get right well and it's funny there's so many so I <laughs> I remember when I first started doing 411s with my team and when I was in your position, Ellen Marie, and I was doing 411s, there were so many agents that hated it, right? Like they literally did not want to sit down with me. And I was like, why do people, what is wrong with all these people? Like, cause I've always been like, I set the goal, I hit the goal, I set the goal, I hit the goal. Like I'm not, you know, like that's what I do. And so it was never a stressful thing for me to sit down. How, you know, was that stressful in the beginning for some people? Because I think when you do start to bring that in, it, it can weed people out that are just not wanting accountability, right? Like that became one of my values in my business. And I know that Christie's yes, because this, we've gone through this and I know a lot of people need to go through it. So that's why I'm, I want, and I want you to give them advice on how to get there, but like, how do you bring it in and how do you not shy away when people start getting mad? Like, how are you like, Hey, th no, this is like, this is important to us and, and it has to be important to you or it's just not the right fit. So I came in in the beginning once I was like, I love this and everyone's going to do it or else. And I said, this is the template you're going to use no matter what, fill this out, get this to me. And we're going to go over this, but obviously not everyone did that. And they're like, this is homework. I hate this. So then we went back to, okay, I'm going to meet with you weekly and I'll help you fill this out and kind of, and then that didn't work out. That became boring to be honest. It was like me telling them what their goals should be like, this is silly. And then we got away from it completely. And then we got back on track. We've been all over the place. Right. Um, it came down to figuring out, obviously I know everyone's different personality, but how they want to be held accountable and what works for each person. Um, something as simple as like a different template for one agent versus what I use. Yes, this works better for this person and this is what they're going to stick to. And that's completely fine. So I will adapt to that obviously. Um, and it's about, for me, the accountability and what works for each person. And sometimes our weekly meetings are not about the 411. It's about what that person needs at the time. And it might be a conversation about their baby not sleeping through the night rather than, okay, how come you didn't get this goal done? Whatever it might be. Um, so we're not like super strict. Like, I don't want it to make it seem like we only do 411s and that's it and nothing else, but it's really you know, knowing what that person needs and the whole person. And with that, you reach your goals organically. And when it happens that way, oh, look, we can check that off. Remember we put that on here and it feels really good that way. So once you start feeling good about it and the other person does as well, really, then it, it happens. It works. It's yeah. such a try. It's, it, it kind of reminds me of something you guys said before, which is basically trusting the process long enough for the process to give you the results. And then when you get the results, you're like, oh, this is a great process. But there's always a gap between starting a new process and when you get the results. And you have, it's the pushing through that. That's the my motto this year mm -hmm. with getting out of production. Yeah. Well, gosh, that's amazing. So what other standards have you guys put in to place um, as a team? Because I feel like it's funny. So I look at you, Dan, and I look at your personality. I'm like, you've got to be the standard guy. You're the spreadsheet guy. So like, you've got to be the one who wants it, but you didn't want to hold anybody accountable to them. So I know. 
what else have you put in, t- you know, in place? And then El Marie, are you the one who's holding everybody accountable basically to those? What does she that look like? She definitely is more to it than I am. I will, I will give her that. Dan's a pushover. Let's be real. So <laughs> what standard do you put in place? I don't know. They're right behind us. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. All the things on the wall, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, honestly, it's just, you have to be a great team player in yeah. our organization. You have to, um, like, we don't want complaining. You know, we, we, we don't want that. If you have an issue, you have to be able to talk about it face to face or by phone with that person directly. You know, we want a lot of communication. Um, we, we went through struggles with that. You know, COVID brought its challenges um, at first. Um, you know, you feel disconnected. Um, you know, you, you try to get together, but yet you can't really get together. Um, yeah. So standards are, I mean, you have to show up. You know, you have to, you have to show up and do what you said you were going to do. And, you know, and it's not like, a, oh, you didn't do that. So we're done our call, but it's talking through it. Right. Cause I know that if that happened to me back when I started coaching, I wouldn't have had a coach after six months in mm. cause you probably would have gave me three strikes every month <laughs> for, the, for six months. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, it really, it wouldn't, I, I would have been out of coaching if I got fired like that. Yeah. But I know what it was for me. So that's why I'm a little bit more lenient towards it because I'm like, Hey, you know what they're doing? They're doing things. They're growing. But again, it's some, some people want it different though. So, you know, I know that Greg, one of our sales agents, he, he definitely wants to be held, held to a higher level. Mm. He, he needs that more direct accountability on it. Well, and that's one of your biggest, you know, challenges together, right? That's been one of your biggest challenges is that, you know, we heard in the beginning, Dan just, you know, sees all of the angles. So how's that drive you crazy, Ellen Marie? What, like, what do you do to counteract that? So Don't that's anything why, <laughs> I feel like that's why though my disc profile changed because <laughs> with Dan being so nice all the time, <laughs> It's like you need you need the good parent and the not bad parent but the stricter parent. So I am more strict with our children, and I say you need to report your numbers or there's going to be a problem. Yeah. And it's like, oh well, you know, they're well, busy. We know the numbers are what our business is, so right. You know, that's a definite truth. Anybody out there, you know, you got to get those numbers. And but I think like they. That I would hope, and they're probably listening, but I would hope that the team respects me enough that they know, like, if, if I'm asking for something, it, there's a real reason behind it and there's a purpose. And I'm not just saying report your numbers because that's what I'm told to do. Um, you know, that's what we're going to focus on. So I feel that when I do have to have a conversation like that, they know it's serious and there's a real reason. Hmm. And As we went through, oh, go ahead, Linz. No, I was just going to see if Dan's a part of those conversations or really is it coming from you? Sometimes. It depends. Yeah, Yeah. it depends. Sometimes there's too much communication between us. I'm an over communicator big time. So I try to make it like less and just myself. That's been my thing recently because we talk too much. Mm. (laughs) So you referenced this past year and coming through the COVID thing which we're still in the midst of. What did you guys, did you have any weaknesses or holes that became really apparent because of what we went through? And then did you find any strengths that were revealed also during this past year? Take the floor on this one. (laughs) So, (laughs) yes. Um, All of a sudden we went from a team of being together I swear, like all day, every day, agents and admins having so much fun to now you have to all be at home and you can't see each other except through Zoom. And we all have kids and we all are going crazy and got super frustrated and realized that there are some holes within the team. Um, Communication was a big thing through agents and admins. and it was, it became really, really apparent during stay at home um, to the point where like- There were breakdowns. Yeah, like I, I didn't know what we were gonna do some days. I'm like, I can't do this. Um, and it's like, you have to break down 
to break through. Is that the saying? I, that's so true. And we did. And I do feel that then we, that's where some of our standards came into place. Like if you feel something, say something right away. We don't want, and talking behind people's backs, things like that type of standards. Um, and we put different communication standards into place. We put different jot forms into place that I think have saved some relationships. Um, we kind of just ideally figured out what systems and unfortunately there were some people as well that, you know, we realized that weren't yeah. a fit for the team during that the same time. So a lot happened, um, but all for the better, I think, you know. Without a doubt. And look, we, we like to mastermind a lot and yeah. we're not just putting this all into place just because we think of it, No, we're learning from everybody out there. Oh yeah, and you we know, took the time to talk to like anyone. Without, possible. And that, I think that's one thing that we did th together. We did that through through that stay at home. Is you know, I know I was on Zoom a handful of times. Lindsay, we had gotten on together, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, we're just we were we wanted to figure out how to navigate through it. What do we got to do with our team? What are you doing? And it just it helped in every way possible. Yeah, I love that. So we had a question come in. How has hiring Ellen Marie in your business helped your quality of life and to focus on bigger goals? Definite dramatic quality of life change to where um, I know that like if I go on vacation, she's me when I'm not here. I mean, she's on my email, my phone, she responds. And again, there's that trust that she responds the way that I would respond to it. Um, you know, so my quality of life has has definitely improved um, now with the craziness of the market and me st still being in sales. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely still crazy, but uh, I'm, I'm at least able to coach the agents here a little bit more, which is a huge to do for me. I mean, that's what, that's what I want to end up doing. You know, I, I want to, I want to be that person there, you know, and it's enabled me to do that to where I don't have to go and worry. All right. What emails are coming in? And I'm, I'm in, my, my inbox is like at, at no unread messages at all times. Like I can't stand that. Right. So it's always cleared. Everything's labeled, you know, but <laughs> it's labeled. <laughs> yeah, it is no joke. It's, it's brutal. It is very, I'm very brutal. My email. Yeah. So, so when I, see it, you know, friends of mine have like thousands of emails, it gives me anxiety, like no other. Um, but, and she knows that about me, so she can take it, run with it. Um, so if I'm on an appointment, I know that things are going to handle on the back end, but it's not just Ellen Marie. It's, it's the listing managers, the transaction managers. I mean, you know, I trust each and every one of them that they're communicating the way we want to communicate with people, that they're handling the business that, um, that, that they're supposed to handle it the certain way that, that we have a standard of doing it. Right. Um, and, and it's really her coming on board in that capacity has really helped because I haven't had to focus on that end of the business as far as systems and processes and customer service, you know, increasing the level. That's what her goals are. My goals are driving production. Without that production, we're not successful. Well, and you clearly trust her to take over, right? Like, and you know, there's so many people that we come in contact with that they're not there with their person. And when did you know, like, was, was there a moment or was there something that happened when you were like, man, she could, she could do this. Like she can do this without me. The day we met. <laughs> <laughs> not the day we met. Um, no. Is that a closing table? Why not? <laughs> um, That's awesome. So, uh, I, I honestly think it may have been like one of the first vacations that I actually like trusted her to handle everything. Um, and at that point I was like, wow, this feels really good to not have to worry and to actually be with my family and not worry about work. And even though I would maybe touch base and still do every now and then, it's, it has died down drastically. Mm -hmm. And um, depends on where we're at too. I mean, if there's like real big issues, obviously, hey, look, I, I will be in communication. But even then, I, I still trust that it's going to get worked out. And they'll, they'll make the decisions and guide the client the way that I would. I think that the vacation thing is such a great road test of, of your business, of your systems and of your relationship. It's such a great way to do it. And I remember the first time you went to, because you guys go to Disney World all the time, right? You're Disney yeah. people. 
the first time you checked out and Ellen Marie's like, yeah, I'm not going to talk to him for whatever, two weeks or a week, whatever it was. And I was like, like, he, th- he doesn't check in. Like he's not, I think that no, was I'm doing an email. I'm doing yeah, everything. that was it. Yeah. 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 yeah that, like, that's really, that's that was awesome. the goal of hers is not to talk to me. He definitely um, texted me and I said, don't talk to me. Like that was my yeah. response. <laughs> well, I think it- the other thing is you guys do that. He does that when you're right. away too, that you're now you're not as good as not checking in, but we're, we're, we're working on that. But you actually check out versus sometimes we see Lindsay, right? You see like the rainmaker checks out, but the admin doesn't actually check out. Yeah, it was definitely harder for me. Um, it's easier now, but Dan will return the favor and handle whatever needs to be handled. It's slowly, it had to come across slowly. I think first it was like, hey, handle yeah. my email. Then it was, all right, you know what? You got to handle my phone too. Because once I knew she could handle the email, I'm like, handle the text message, handle the incoming calls because I can't handle this. Yeah. Well, and so let's, let's, I mean, we've got a couple minutes here. Dan, I just, we need to applaud you for that because I actually do not know almost anybody that does that, that jumps back, back in. Now, I mean, I know Christy and I do, and we try to, um, in our own businesses as much as we can, because we were on the other end of that. Right. And so I feel like when you're on the other end of that, then you're really like disciplined on not being that person because you know, that feeling, um, Ellen Marie, like how awesome is that to have somebody that, you know, really truly is in it with you and, and hopefully you guys can, and I don't know, maybe Dan, you can say something here too, but like, I'd love to challenge anybody that's listening to this you know, that is so important. It is. And honestly, it comes down to, and we talk about it a lot, like the cross training within the team where the the positions that I've been in and Dan, as long as he's been in the business, we know how to do all those things and the trust is just there. Um, But that's, you know, that's why the cross training is super important. But I I mean, yeah, I would say, I mean, I don't remember other than last year, maybe her taking off some time. I mean, it was very rare. Mm-hmm. So I want that because it's, she's, she's getting burnout from it. You know, there's no, what, what's the use of that? You know, if she's going to get burnout, um, she needs that time. You know, she got two young kids, which is just a work. And I mean, we, we all take calls into the evenings. We all watch our email throughout, you know? So it's like, we do need that downtime and we need to un- unload. And no matter who it is on the team, if an agent goes away, we got them. If an admin wants to take time off, we got them. It's not a big deal. We all just pick up the slack for each other. Yeah. And, that's a da- and honestly, that's a daily occurrence around here. That, that is one of the, one of the standards that we have is to always help each other out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I just think that's so important because we see that so often people are burning out like crazy, especially in this business. And um, I just, you know, I applaud you because I think that that's an amazing thing, but that just goes to show you why you guys are building the culture that you're building too, because you actually care about each other. You know, well, and those are simple things you can hold each other accountable to on the 411, right? Your, your time off and you're actually checking out and yeah. Yep. I love it. Well, so let's ask this because we actually haven't asked this question and I want to make sure that we've covered it, but um, did you guys ever have a time where you thought about ending your business relationship or have you ever thought about like, Hey, we need to have a really serious conversation because we're not in a good place together. Definitely never thought about ending the relationship. I will say that have there been conversations that had to have been had just to kind of not clear the air between us, but get things straight and get on the same page. Yeah, but it's never been confrontational. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm Mr. Positive, so. I don't know yeah. <laughs> no, but I, 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 like we were talking about we'll earlier. Say, we I, need to fight more. That's what he tells <laughs> me all the time. <laughs> I, I adapt to the different situations just because my personality. So, yeah. um, but if this was 10 years ago, I prob- there probably would be, but I've learned a heck of a lot along the way that it's not something that's worth blowing up over. You know, yeah. do we, do we vent, do we stress? Yeah, but it's never really at one another. It's yeah. just about the situation that we're in. I think the biggest risk to your relationship was not a confrontation. It was what we talked about earlier where you had to, Dan, figure out why you were doing what you were doing so you could bust through that ceiling. Absolutely. And I don't think Ellen Marie ever verbalized this ever 
but I would guess that in her head, she had thoughts of if, what if he can't get through this and I want to keep growing and what if he doesn't? And I think every- She's gonna replace me either, any, either way. She was replacing me, Christy, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, it's only a matter of time. <laughs> but, I, but I think a lot of teams go through that who have super talented ops people leading their teams because they're often the entrepreneur personality versus just the SC personality when you get to a larger team like yours. So I think the fact that you navigated that with such trust and grace was true kudos to both of you. Um, Cause I, I, I don't see the confrontation being an issue. Hmm. Nah. Nah, yeah. not worth he it. You can't get rid of me, let's be real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So we had a question come in and we, ha sorry, I just cut you guys off. We have a question that came in that I want to probably end with here. So we'll wrap it up with this. Who is the next hire on your team towards accomplishing your goals for both of you? So me is another transaction coordinator and a marketing coordinator slash database client care manager. And that gets you fully out of the ops pieces, I'm guessing. Mostly, uh, yeah. I guess, Mostly, yeah. 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 I didn't even think of that, but yes. <laughs> uh, mine's a listing specialist. Mm -hmm. um, mine is definitely honing in on that listing specialist. I'm the lead listing agent here. So for me, it's um, finding that person that or persons that I can trust um, and really training them. And that's the big focus this year. And my follow-up to that, as somebody who is in your personality profile, is that going to be really hard for you to trust that next person to take that over? Because that is the sales. That is, yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, but I have to trust in the process. Um, yeah. You know, um, that's that's an affirmation that I write every day. Um, I am. I have to trust in the process of going through this. And if we do it the right way, we train that person the right way and we continue to build opportunity, then it'll all be okay. Awesome. And that's why I made that change in coaching because that was a big part of what I wanted and I wasn't, I wasn't seeing why and I wasn't really relating that to, to anything. It was just, no, just because I don't, you know, I want to do this. No, why do I really want to do it? And that's what we're digging on. I love it. All right. Well, you guys, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Um, we really, we know how valuable your time is. So thank you for giving it up for an hour so that we could ask you guys questions about your leadership. Your leadership is really fun to watch. And I love the different personalities and having you guys on here. It's, it's needed um, for everybody to hear this conversation. And so I really appreciate it. How do people get in touch with you if they want to send referrals and ask you questions? All be on questions. your team. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, email me <laughs> call me email me ellen marie at the malls group um the malls group.com i feel like everyone knows where to find dan like who and i don't think we him? said where you're did we say where you're from like what state you're in so no we did not actually i thought of that because i should have said it in the beginning I, um, I just thought of that uh so we work out of keller williams washington township uh which is south jersey so about i'd say 15 20 minutes outside of philadelphia yeah. uh, so between there and the shore points Pretty sure everybody needs themselves a Jersey girl, except you're not really a Jersey girl. You're a Pennsylvania girl. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for being with us. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank Appreciate you. It. Have a great Bye, day, guys. guys. You too.